Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to use TensorFlow estimators to develop a machine learning model capable of diagnosing whether a patient has breast cancer. Estimator is a high-level API that simplifies machine learning programming by including functionality for training, evaluation, prediction, and serving. Plus, TensorFlow Estimator integrates very well with Google Cloud Platform, which we'll use to expand on this project by using GCP ML Engine to tune hyperparameters in an upcoming video. So watch for that video coming soon. The data set used for training and evaluation is the Breast Cancer Wisconsin original data set. Our model will return the probability of the patient belonging to one of two classes, malignant or benign. So let's get started. First, let's load the libraries we will use. TensorFlow is the machine learning framework we will use to build our neural network. Seaborn is a statistical data visualization library, which we are going to use to plot pairs of features. Pandas is a library for working with data sets, which we'll use to manipulate our data. NumPy is a library for high performance computing, which in our case, we will use to analyze our results. Now that we have the libraries loaded, let's load the breast cancer data set. The data set is available at my uh, Google Cloud Platform bucket at uh, this URL. The original data set is available from the University of California, Irvine at this URL here. The UIC repository is a great resource for data sets, so check it out sometime. We can take a look at the data with the pandas ilock command. I like using ilock because sometimes you need to manipulate the data as we shall see shortly, and that's a convenient way to do it. So we have a patient ID, which we'll not use in our model, and then nine measurement values, which will be our features, and one binary class, which will be our label. You can also run the describe command to get additional statistics on the data set. Also, Seaborn's pair plot plots pairs of features starting with column one, since we don't need the first column, column zero, the patient ID. If you watched my video on using Keras and TensorFlow to build a machine learning model using the IRIS data set, you'll remember how nicely the classifications of flower species were displayed. In this data set, it's much more difficult for a human to identify the classifications, but not for a machine learning algorithm. If you try to train a model from this data, you'll get an error because the data contains invalid values. Looking at the raw data, some fields contain a question mark. For example, row 23 in the bare nucleoli column. There are a number of ways to handle this and be aware any method changes the integrity of the data. One way is to remove the rows of data that contain the invalid data. This is the method I chose for this project, but in production you should determine how removing data affects the integrity of the model. This can be a difficult task and is beyond the scope of this project, but it's something to be aware of. Removing the rows with the question mark is easy in Pandas, and it's done in this line right here. Here I created a new data set, data set 2, so we can see the difference in the size of the data sets and the number of rows removed. In production, you may not want to duplicate your data set. As we can see,
as we can see, 16 rows contained a question mark and were removed. This is the length of the original data set. This is the length of data set 2, the difference being 16. Here we specify the feature columns and the labels in the last column class. In the original data set, the class was a value of 2 for benign and 4 for malignant. If we use those values, TensorFlow thinks we're building a classifier with five classes, 0 through 4. So we convert a 2 to 0 and a 4 to 1 right here. So now we have a 0 classification as benign and a 1 as malignant. We then split the data set into train, eval, and test data sets. The percentages chosen were somewhat arbitrary and then I print some of the data sets just to be sure that everything looks correctly. We now have our data formatted and we are ready to develop our network. Our model will use a TensorFlow Estimator Deep Neural Network Classifier with two hidden layers of 10 nodes each. That's defined right here. The number of classes is two, that is zero for benign and one for malignant. The optimizer is a FTRL optimizer with a learning rate of 0 0.01 and the activation function is ReLU. The feature columns are created in this function. We can look at what feature columns define. The following is a graphical representation of our model. The input layer consists of 10 nodes, one for each data column in our data set, two hidden layers of 10 nodes each, and then the output layer consisting of two nodes. We are now ready to train our network. The train method takes at a minimum an input function which we create here. This function takes our train data set and number of epochs. X is our feature columns values and Y is our classes. So let's train the model for 3,000 epochs. So that took less than a minute. Now that the model is trained, we can evaluate its performance by running the evaluate method. This time we pass the eval data set to the make input function. We can see the raw data returned by the evaluate method by running print ev. The model performs well on the evaluation data set. We can also print some fields in a more readable format. The accuracy on the validation set is over 99%. Now we can use the model to make predictions on our test data set. As above, we create a make test function and use it in the predict method. This time we specify the test data set and one epoch. Prediction result is a list of predicted classes and probabilities. We could format this so it's a little easier to read. So for the first row of data, the model predicted the class is zero with a probability of 99.9%. .9 
and a class of one with a probability of much less than 0.1%. Looking at the raw data in the original CSV file and in the test data set, we see the class should be benign, which is a 2 in the original data and a 0 in our binary classifier, which is correct. And if you go through all the predicted classes and compare that to the actual class, you find that in this case they are all correct. We can now save our model, so if we want to make predictions in the future, we don't need to retrain it every time. First we define all the columns and feed that to the export method of estimator. The model will be saved in our out directory, which is logs forward slash breast cancer underscore trained. The export saved model method creates a new folder with the saved model dot pb. The model will be saved in the output directory, which is logs forward slash breast cancer underscore trained. The export saved model function creates a new folder. We need to copy this folder name and paste it into this line here to read the new model. Now we can load the model and feed it new data. The new data is assigned to inputs and then we call the predict function on the new data. The model predicts the class for the first row of data should be benign with a 99.4% probability. And looking at the raw data, the class is indeed benign. And the model predicts the class for the second set of data to be malignant with a probability of 93.7%. And looking at the actual data, the class is indeed malignant. So there you have it. In this project, we use TensorFlow estimators to develop, train, and evaluate a machine learning model capable of diagnosing whether a patient has breast cancer. We then save the model so we could load it later without the need to retrain to make new predictions. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please subscribe, and if you think this video might be helpful to someone else, please share. Also, the code is available at the GitHub link below. If you have any questions, post them below and I'll try to answer them. And also, if there are any topics you'd like to see a video on, post that also in the comments below. And thanks for watching.